here at uh, ACR 2022. I uh, uh, presented uh, a first in human uh, study, BNT211, combining a CAR T cell targeting clodin 6 combined with a uh, CARVAC, which is a, a CAR T cell amplifying RNA vaccine. In this study, um, we targeted a, a molecule called clodin 6 which is a tight junction associated membrane protein that's not expressed in he adult healthy tissue as it is silenced during organogenesis, but is expressed um, in certain cancer types. And these are some high unmet medical need cancers like testicular cancer, ovarian cancer, and endometrial cancer. Why did we combine CAR T cells with the CARVAC? Preclinical models had shown that by displaying uh, the antigen, uh, in the patient, we could see that, the, that let's say, this supported the expansion of the CAR T cells and also the activation of the, of the CAR T cells. And by giving the vaccine uh, several times, we could uh, uh, create that the number of CAR T cells would uh, become in a certain optimal therapeutic window. And I think that is required over a long period of time to really get uh, tumor rejection. That was what the preclinical model uh, showed. And based on that preclinical model, we decided to go into a uh, first in human study where we could see at least in, a, in, in the different dose levels that the CARVAC really uh, prolonged the persistence of the uh, CAR T cells uh, uh, following uh, uh, infusion. The study we did is in all comers. Patients that had failed all prior uh, lines of, 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 of treatment and um, uh, they were treated in a classic dose escalation design with bifurcation. So in other words, the trial consisted of two parts. Part one, only the T cells, and part two, the CAR T cells combined with the vaccine. When we look at the safety data of this of the study, I can say that the study was quite safe. We did find a couple of DLTs, but those were mostly related to the lymphodepleting chemotherapy regimen. We did see some other adverse events, some of uh, uh, grade three or higher, but again, these were mostly associated with the lymphodepleting chemotherapy, and some were lab abnormalities that were asymptomatic. One important thing was that we also saw some cytokine release syndrome in a total of eight patients, but not more than grade one to two, sometimes requiring tocilizumab, so the anti-IL-6 receptor antibody, but most of the times that was not even necessary. When we look at the efficacy data, what we saw was that in the 16 patients, 14 were available for efficacy because we had at least at six weeks a CT scan. We saw six partial responses, five patients with shrinkage of target lesions, but not enough to call it uh, a partial response, and one patient with a stable disease where the, uh, the, 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 the six week scan didn't change from the baseline scan. So in total, an objective response rate of 43% and a disease control rate of 86%. I think in a highly uh, pre-treated patient population, that's quite uh, encouraging. We did see that in some patients, the, the response that occurred deepened over time and up to even a complete remission that's now ongoing for more than six months. This was in a testicular cancer uh, patient. So overall, I think that um, uh, BNT211 has shown some very impressive early uh, results and what we think will happen is that we will continue with the trial as it is, uh, perform even more uh, dose escalation and in the end probably will move when we have a recommended phase 2 dose to expansion cohorts in for instance testicular cancer and other cancer types. I think this is a first uh, demonstration that combination of CAR T cells and the vaccine may have some beneficial uh, effects, uh, especially in terms of uh, expansion of the cells and persistence of the cells.